Hello, Grade Series. This is Chapter 8, where we won't be doing division again. We're going to talk about imperial units. Now, if you're going to be living in uh, any country that isn't the three countries that actually use imperial units, you're going to find yourself, well, not really using imperial units at all. So the imperial measurement system is used in three countries around the world. Now, most people, most countries use the metric system. The reason why the imperial measurement system is, uh, well, still pretty common is that the United States uses it. And the United States is actually a pretty popular vacationing spot. And just tourism. It has a pretty decent tourism industry too. Anyhow, so we start with length. Remember that length is the measurement of distance between two endpoints. You can use almost anything to measure length. Say we have this calculator here and uh, this hand mirror. It's a, it's a pocket mirror, guys. Hmm, this calculator is around two pocket mirrors long. That is an example of a non-standard unit. However, a standard imperial unit of measurement for length would be an inch. An inch is uh, this big. This part, guys. To compare, this is my hand. Again, remember that length is a measurement of distance between two endpoints. Now we're going to measure to the nearest half inch, right the length. How do you round to half inches? Well, you see, there's half inch and then there's the quarter inches. It's like rounding to, well, not half. Say we have, uh, hmm, one and an eighth inch. One eighth is smaller than a quarter of an inch. So you round down. But if it's uh, a quarter of an inch or more, then you round up. It's, you use rounding to halves a lot if you live in a place without pennies. Because in a place without pennies, you know that the next biggest coin is five cents. So if it's uh, one cent or two cents, you round down to zero cents. But if it's three cents or four cents, you round up to five cents. That's basically how it works. And if it's five cents, then why are you rounding? Anyhow, measure to the nearest half inch. Write the length. Okay, guys, when you're actually measuring, don't use one of these rulers unless you have adult supervision because these rulers, they retract very quickly and they are very sharp and I almost cut myself. <laughs> this is a small ruler and it's not that hard. So it's not actually that easy to cut yourself on this, this one. But most of these types of rulers, the tape measures, they're sharp, they're fast, they're strong. They will cut you. You will feel pain. Don't use them without adult supervision. Anyhow. So that's just a little over 17 inches. It's not to the point of being 17 and a quarter inches. It's less than 17 and a quarter inches. So you round down to 17 inches because it's not big enough to be rounded up to 17 and a half. 17 inch. Now, this tape measure right here, it starts at zero. But a lot of actual rulers do not start at zero. 
If you're wondering, this tape measure is locked right now, so it won't cut my fingers. Anyhow, a lot of the rulers don't start at zero. You have to line up the zero to measure it. You can't just line it up to the end of the ruler. You have to line it up to zero. Some rulers do start at zero, like the end of the ruler is zero, but a lot of rulers, it's something like, this is the end of the ruler. This is where zero starts. So, yeah. Anyhow, moving on. To number two. Oh, this isn't long enough. So this one is basically exactly 31 inches. Whoops. Now what about little three and four over here? Well, three is... Uh, Oh, okay, so that's just over two and two, no, three quarters inches. Yeah, I'm sorry, this ruler's kind of small in case you haven't noticed. So it's just over two and three quarters. Now, three quarters Let's just put that over here. This, say this is one inch. It's not, this is more like one. F this is almost a foot, but. And then this is half an inch. These are the quarter inches. Zero, one, half. So you're trying to round to here, here, or here. Right now, we're at here. Which is closer to here, one, than to here, half. Basically, we're going to round up into three inches. This one is more, this one as in number four, is more over here. And since it's just over 11 and a quarter inches, then we're going to have to round up to 11 and a half inches. This is just over a quarter, which is a halfway point. So 11 and a half inches. Time to move on and not measure things. Show each length. Now I'm not going to actually draw that because in case you haven't noticed, this ruler is kind of floppy. Again, guys, don't use a tape measure. These things are actually pretty dangerous, especially the larger ones. And even with the smaller ones, I have to take care not to cut myself. Because these things, they retract quickly. And quick things can cut you. They're dangerous. Show each length, 12 inches. So you go and you look at where 12 inches is. If you're using an extremely long ruler, Sometimes, instead of 12 inches, it will say 1 feet, or 1 FT, because 12 inches is equal to a foot. This is 12 inches. Use my face for a comparison. This is actually really dangerous because it's so close to my face, but... Anyhow, the next one is 40 inches. This is, we're at three feet now. 40 inches is, okay, here. I'm gonna lock this. Tape measure safety, children. Lock your tape measures. This is 40 inches. This is my arm span for comparison. 40 inches is slightly over a meter. Three inches, okay. And three inches is this much. This is my hand for comparison. 15 inches. Oh, I pulled it out a little too much. Is this much. 
Here's my arm for comparison. Okay. So after inches, what are the other customary units of length? Well, we're going to find out. Here's what comes after the inch. We have one inch, and then we have one foot, which is 12 inches. And then we have one yard, which is three feet. And then we have a mile, which is 5,280 feet, or 1,760 yards. And trust me, I'm pretty sure there's no tape measures out there that are that long. Unless you're looking for those industrial sized ones. But those tape measures probably won't be this sharp because that would be really dangerous. Anyhow, choose the most appropriate unit to measure each length. Distance between Paris, France, and Lisbon, Portugal. I know that some people don't know where Portugal is. And they aren't that clear, at least in grade 3, where France is. They know that France is a country. Paris is... Say this circle is France. Okay, that's not a circle. This circle is France. Paris would be somewhere around here. I know that France is not in the shape of a circle. And then, Spain would be here. Spain's actually pretty big, at least for a European country. Because in case you haven't noticed, the countries on other continents are kind of large. And then, Portugal is here. Lisbon is the capital of Portugal. Paris is the capital of France. Considering that they are literally a country apart, a country and a half at least apart, well, it would be more appropriate, most appropriate, to measure the length in miles. Because it's just that far away. Length of an Olympic swimming pool. Olympic swimming pools are pretty large, but they're not miles large. They're more on the yard side, because in case you haven't noticed, a yard is only this long. But a mile is way too long. So it's not that smart to measure a swimming pool in feet, unless it's the depth of a swimming pool. But the length is more of a yard thing. What about the height of a hamster? Hamsters are small. They're not a foot tall. So they're dogs or cats, not hamsters. So height of a hamster would be the job of inches. Let's choose the best estimate. A foot. So a foot is this long. Is a foot closer to a dinner plate or a rasher of bacon? I mean, it's possible for bacon to be this long. It's possible, but usually they aren't. This is more of a dinner plate thing. One yard. Is it the height of a desk? Or the width of a laptop? Now let me get a yard out. Last time I checked, laptops aren't supposed to be this big. It's more of the height of a desk. Ten yards. Is it a classroom or a football field? So a yard isn't actually all that big. It's like taking a large step. Can you cross a football field in ten steps? 
I mean, if you're a giant, sure. But can, well, the average tall, well, not even tall, the person of average height, a person of average height cross a football field in 10 steps? No. So it's more of a classroom. Two feet. Is it the shoulder height of a golden retriever or the shoulder height of a chihuahua? For those that don't actually own a dog or know that much about dogs or have friends that own dogs, I'm the third one. I have a lot of friends that own dogs. But the shoulder height of a dog, pardon my bad dog drawing, that looks more like a sheep, but the shoulder height is where the dog's Shoulder is when it's on all fours. In case you haven't noticed, chihuahuas are kind of small. Fun fact, the shoulder height of a golden retriever is actually about two feet. Eight inches. A pencil or a notebook? I mean, it could be both. But usually standard size school notebooks are bigger. And, well, pencils usually are 8 inches. In fact, I measured an unsharpened pencil and it was almost exactly 8 inches. 3 inches. A goldfish or a fish tank? I mean, unless you're, unless you're invested in sea monkeys, this is kind of small for a fish tank. And sea monkeys aren't exactly classified as fish. It's more of a goldfish. We're going to move on to a problem solving strategy for the next section. Gina decides to organize her cubby. She puts nine books, each two inches thick, side by side, and finds that she has five inches of space left. How large is her cubby? You can work backwards. What do we know? Well, we know how many books she puts in, and we know how thick each of the books are, and we also know how much space she has left. So what do we need to find? We need to find how much space was there beforehand, basically. So there's five inches of space left, plus the nine two inches, because it's nine books that are all two inches. And brackets first, that gives us 5 plus 2 times 9, or 9 times 2, they're the same, commutative property, 18. 5 plus 18, 23. That's an equal sign, not a 2. Okay, 23 inches. Her cubby was 23 inches. It's not that big. It's not also it's it's also not that small. Anyhow, check our answer. Does it make mathematical sense? Uh, reread the question. Nine books, two inches uh, thick. All of them, each two inches thick, side by side. Finds that she has five inches of space left. And our calculations are correct. So yeah, it makes sense mathematically. Logically, I mean, it's a cubby. It shouldn't be too big either. So let's do some practice problems. Kimberly went to the plaza for lunch and spent 30 minutes there. She then rested and talked to her friends for 14 minutes before going to the skateboard park. She was in the skateboard park for 48 minutes. Kimberly then took 10 minutes to skateboard home. She arrived home at 2.30 p.m. When did Kimberly arrive at the plaza? So we start with the time that she arrived home at, 2.30 p.m., and then we go back 10 minutes to when she started skateboarding home, and that's 2.20. We go back another 48 minutes to when she started, well, when she was in the skateboard park, when she started being in the skateboard park. And that gives us 1.32. We go back another 14 minutes to when she started talking to her friends. 
and that's 118. We go back another 30 minutes to when she started spending time at the plaza, which is when she arrived at the plaza. That is 12.48 p.m. Well, we got our answer. If you want to check, then 12.48, spend 30 minutes, you go to 118, 118, you t spend uh, 14 minutes talking, that's 132, and then you spend 48 minutes at the skateboard park, that's 220, and then you take 10 minutes, well, you as in Kimberly, to skateboard home, that's 230, she arrives home at 2.30, 2.30 and 2.30 match up, so it makes mathematical sense, and your answer is probably correct, because you just technically reread the question. 12.48 p.m. was when she arrived at the plaza. Okay, James was trying out different types of cookies. He ate three cookies of each type. In the end, he ended up eating 18 cookies. How many types of cookies did James eat? Well, it's three cookies of each type and it's 18 cookies total, so that's 18 divided by 3, which is 6. Six types of cookies. James ate six types of cookies. Done! Back to units. We're at capacity now. So capacity is how much an object can hold, such as one cup, a pint, a quart, a gallon. Thing is, depending on which country you are in, cups and pints, they might be different. Yeah. But so far we're just going to go with one cup and then two cups is a pint and two pints is a quart and four quarts oh dear lord why did I draw this this way last quart guys yeah they're not they're not circles anymore they're dots four quarts is a gallon. Right. Circle the letter of the best estimate. Olympic swimming pool. Okay, Olympic swimming pools actually hold a lot of water. So we have uh, 700,000 gallons, 2,500 quarts, or 80,000 pints. An Olympic swimming pool is actually about 700,000 gallons. Yeah. A juice jug. So a juice jug is, uh, well, two gallons is way too much. And seven quarts is almost two gallons. So it should be around one gallon. Most, like if you go shopping and it's like a big jug of milk or a big jug tub of, of juice, jug, tub, I, wait no, it's tub of ice cream, not, not tub of juice. Imagine a tub of juice, okay, I'll stop right there. It's around a gallon. Here's the thing though, most people in the world do not live in America. I know America has a big population, but it's not most 
people in the world. And the other two countries that use the imperial system have a pretty, it's not, their populations aren't too small, but they're not that big either, so. Honestly, you're probably never going to use gallons unless you're buying uh, gas for your car in uh, one of the three countries, most likely America. But honestly, nowadays, uh, electric cars are becoming more common, so I'm not sure whether or not people that live in countries uh, that use a metric system will actually end up using this. But hey, plastic water bottle. So a plastic water bottle is usually, well, a little bit more than two cups. And what's two cups? A pint. Why is it all A? Anyhow, moving on. So, amount of blood in the human body. Here's the thing. It's five liters, but what's that in gallon, pint, or quarts? Well, five quarts is slightly more than a gallon. Five liters is also slightly more than a gallon. So it's closer to five quarts. Now for a kettle, I'm not sure what type of kettle you're owning, but most kettles don't, three cups is just no. No. Most kettles have more than three cups in them. Hello, my friend. In fact, I would say that most... Hmm. So... Two pints is a quart. So this would be a quart and this would be two quarts and a half. They're usually closer to five pints. Yeah. And hot water bottles? They're similar to kettles, but also they're kind of not. So if uh, a kettle and a hot water bottle have similar capacity, then that means that, well, five pints is 10 cups. And the only thing close over here is, well, eight cups. Well then, time to move on to some more problem solving. Rina has collected rocks for six years. She now has 178 rocks. In her second year, she collected 48 more rocks than she did in the first year. She only collected 15 rocks per year for her third and fourth years. In her fifth year, she collected 25 rocks, and in her sixth year, she collected 17 rocks. How many did she collect in the first year? Okay, what do we know? We know the amount of rocks she collected for her third, fourth, fifth, and sixth years. We also know the relative amount that she collected for her second year, well, relative to the first year. And we know the total number of rocks that she has collected. What do we need to find? We need to find how many exactly did Rena collect in the first year. Choose a strategy. We could work backwards and use math. Thing is, we could use a chart, table, whatever you want to call it, but we don't really need to because working backwards. Now, 178 minus uh, 17 is the amount she collected in the first five years. And that's 161. 161 minus uh, 25 is the amount that she collected in the first four years. And that's regroup da, 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 136. Now, she collected 15 rocks per year for her third and fourth years. So that's minus 15 twice. This is the first time, and you get 121. 121, that's a 1, not an L. 
minus 15 again is regroup da, 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 106. So that's the amount that she collected in the first two years. So the second year, she collected 48 more rocks than her first year. So the second year is equal to 38 plus first year. And 106 is equal to second year plus first year. Now let's substitute the second year into this algebra equation. Technically, all equations are part of algebra. And you get 106 equals to 48 plus F plus F. You isolate the Fs, you get 2F because, well, F plus F is 2Fs. And you subtract 48 from both sides to get 0. And over here, 106 subtract 48 would be 58. And we're going to divide both sides by 2 to find out the exact amount she had, well, she collected in her first year. Now, what's 58 divided by 2? Oh, 29. She collected 29 rocks in the first year. Okay. Is the solution reasonable? I mean, mathematically, it is. Reread the problem, check over your calculations, maybe work forwards. Reread the problem. Rena has collected rocks for six years. She now has 178 rocks. In her second year, she collected 48 more rocks than she did in the first year. She only collected 15 rocks per year for her third and fourth years. In her fifth year, she collected 25 rocks. And in her sixth year, she collected 17 rocks. How many did she collect in the first year? Now that we've reread the question, well, we could do the calculations. So 29 plus 48 plus 29 is the amount that she collected in the second year. So that's, hmm, ah. 77, and that would equal to 7, 9, 16, regroup, 7, 2, 9, 9 plus 1, 10, regroup, 106, and oh, it is 106, and we don't actually really need to check this part because if, as long as you make sure that the subtraction is correct, we should be fine. So we move on to weight. Now, weight tells how heavy an object is. Of course, there's also mass, but then that's a complete, that's not a completely different concept, but that is a different concept. But I'm not going to confuse you guys with that. Mass, not math. You can measure weight in ounces and pounds, at least. There's also the imperial ton. But not a lot of people use that anymore. It's more ounces and pounds for uh, everyday use. Choose the most appropriate unit to measure the weight of each object. So we have a tennis ball. A tennis ball is pretty light. So it's, well, ounces. O-Z. Laptops, I know they can get pretty light. But most laptops aren't that light, so it's pounds. Bricks, well, they can get pretty heavy. Bricks are definitely pounds. Now circle the letter of the better estimate. Jar of jam, a pound or an ounce? So since... Uh, 
An ounce is pretty light. An ounce is really light. <laughs> but, but, well, here's the thing. Here's an example of a pound. Usually, a standard jar of jam is around a pound. I'm not talking about those small jars. I'm talking about the standard jars. Not the huge jars either. One liter of water. Okay, guys, this is why a lot of people prefer the metric system because one liter of water is equal to one kilogram. And one kilogram is equal to 2.2, approximately, around 2.2 pounds. So one liter of water would be around two pounds. And usually the standard water bottle is uh, f half of a liter. The standard cup, not this cup, okay? The standard cup cup, like the stuff that you drink out of, is uh, usually... Uh, a quarter of a liter. So, bike helmet. Now, a bike helmet is, they're light. They are light. Because if you are carrying seven pounds of weight on your head, first of all, that is painful if you aren't used to it. Second of all, you're probably going to accidentally injure yourself. So it's more than seven ounces. Oh yes, and by the way, most of the small dumbbell weights, like the small weights that you lift that aren't like large, the small ones, most of those, like the really small ones, they're, they start at around five pounds. Now, picture frame. A picture frame is I'm talking about the small picture frames, not the large ones for paintings. I'm talking about picture frames, modern picture frames. They're pretty light, so it's more of the seven ounces. A chihuahua is decently heavy, actually, because, hey, it's still a living animal and it's a living dog. Dogs, they can get pretty small, but they aren't completely tiny like hamsters. So it's more of a four pound thing. By the way, if you didn't pay attention before, it was written on this uh, board that while well, it's 16 ounces to a pound. Okay? Okay? Tibetan Mastiff. These things are massive. They're not mastiffs, they're massives. Get it? Get, get it? They're pretty big dogs. So, it's uh, 120 pounds or 120 ounces. It's more likely to be 120 pounds. Now, 120 pounds is actually a decent uh, weight it's not considered too under it's not considered underweight for an adult female that's of average adult female height of course if you're over six foot tall then well you're probably going to be heavier anyhow last section not time to slack off yet now it's units of time except we're talking about conversion here because guess what guys both the metric system and the imperial system use the same units of time. An hour, minutes, seconds. Well, there's 60 seconds in a minute, but we aren't really focusing on minutes right now. We're focusing more on the hour. So an hour is 60 minutes. Half an hour is 30 minutes. A quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. We're going to do some matching. Now, half an hour. I'm sure that you've seen a clock. If the minute hand, which is, well, the longer hand, goes one full rotation around the clock, an hour has passed. 
So if it goes half in rotation, half an hour has passed. If it goes a quarter of a rotation, a quarter of an hour has passed. Now, which one of these looks like half an hour? Which one of these looks like an hour? The one that's completely shaded. And which one of these looks like a quarter hour? The one with a quarter that is shaded. Okay, now we have some different types of exercises. Write the letter of the matching time. 300 minutes. Well, 300 divided by 60 is also equal to 30 divided by 6 because remember, dividing by tens, you take off zeros. 30 divided by 6 is 5, that would be 5 hours, and that's B. 30 minutes, we've already established that 30 minutes is half an hour. A. 45 minutes. 30 minutes is half an hour, 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, and 30 plus 15 is equal to 45. So one half plus a quarter is equal to three quarters. So that's three quarters of an hour. A. Four hours. Four times 60. You ignore the zero. Four times six. 24, you put the zero back on, and you get 240, which is C. 75 minutes, well, 75 is bigger than 60. 75 minus 60 is 15. So that's a quarter of an hour and an hour. That's C again. Oh. 135 minutes. So that's uh, 135 minus 60 is one hour, and then minus 60 again, two hours. So there's two hours. C definitely isn't the answer. There's two hours. Two hours is 120 minutes. 135 minus 120 is 15, and that's a quarter of an hour. So it's two and a quarter hours. B. Back. Yeah, I, had, I developed this annoying habit when I was a kid to whatever it's something like this, I read out the chain of letters and oftentimes it sounds very unpleasant. Anyways, that's it for the Imperials units. Well, See you next chapter.